This lesson deals with Supplemental Problem 5.2. You can find this problem in the course ebook in the Chapter 5 Supplemental Problems on page 2. Given the integrator circuit that we had in Supplemental Problem 5.1, with this input, which is a square wave, going from 2 volts to minus 2, back to 2, and so on, could you solve for V out as a function of time? You can think of the square wave as a DC source with a value of 2 between 0 and half a millisecond. Let's assume our capacitor is initially uncharged. The voltage across it, when we start the problem, is zero, and then shortly after that, it still is zero, because it can't jump instantaneously. And then from supplemental problem 5.1, we found that V out of T was equal to minus one over R one C two, integral from T zero, which is zero, to T of V of S of X dx. V sub S is equal to two. We're taking the integral of a constant dx. Bring the two out in front, I've got 2 divided by 10k and 0.1 micro. The tenth and the 10 become 1. k is equal to 10 to the 3. Micro is equal to 10 to the minus 6. The product of these two then is equal to 10 to the minus 3. The reciprocal of that is 1,000. So minus 1,000 times 2, and then the integral of 1 dx, upper limit minus the lower limit. We get minus 2,000 times t volts, and this is valid between 0 and half a millisecond. Let's graph this. This is the equation of a straight line passing through zero. When t is equal to zero, you have zero. When t is equal to half a millisecond, the half and the two become one. The millisecond times the k becomes also one. You get minus one. That's this point right here. Let's have a straight line going from zero to minus one at half a millisecond. We'll next integrate between half a millisecond and one millisecond, where the input becomes minus two volts. Now v out at t equals 0.5 millisecond minus, we just found to be equal to minus one volt. And that's also the same at t equals 0.5 milliseconds plus, because the capacitor voltage cannot change instantaneously, and the output voltage is the negative of the capacitor voltage. Minus 1 over R1C2, integral now from 0.5 milliseconds to t of V of S dx, plus our initial condition at the output. This ratio is equal to minus 1,000. This was equal to minus 2. I'm going to bring out the minus 2. The integral of 1 dx, upper limit, minus the lower limit, plus the initial condition of minus 1. Multiplying these two out, we get a minus and a minus canceling, get plus 2,000 T. We get a plus 2,000 times 0.5 milli. Milli and the 1,000 cancel. The half and the two become one, minus one, and I also have the initial condition of also minus one. We get 2,000 times T, minus two, between half a millisecond and one millisecond. Let's graph that. When T is equal to half a millisecond, the K and the milli cancel. The half and the two become one, and I get minus one. Voltage across the output doesn't change instantaneously. It was minus one at half a millisecond minus, it still is at half a millisecond plus. Now when t is equal to one millisecond, the milli and the k cancel, and I get two minus two, which is equal to zero. It's the equation of a straight line with a positive slope. It's gonna go from this point back to here. We're back where we started again. If we take the next cycle of our square wave, we'll get exactly the same result, and it'll repeat itself. Well, the integral of a square wave is a triangle wave. If you notice, there was a resistor in parallel with the capacitor C2 at the top of the page. This is needed for two things. One, for non-ideal effects of the op-amp. There are actually currents going into the plus and minus terminals of the op-amp that are very, very tiny due to the base currents of transistors. Those also get integrated. Put a resistor across there, current has a place to go other than going into the capacitor. The second reason for the resistor is that there's an average voltage across this waveform. It's a half a volt. If you put a resistor across the capacitor, as we'll see later in this chapter, the capacitor will discharge the DC value. This triangle wave will actually move up and have an average value of zero, which will go down from zero to minus a half a volt, up to plus a half a volt, and so on, repeating itself. And this is supplemental problem 5.2.